In our ongoing quest to determine the greatest supermodel of all time, we're up to the second on our short list, Kate Moss. Kate isn't just a supermodel, she's a super muse. Her impact transcends fashion, and no matter how much we see her, she always maintains her mystery. She's had plenty of drug problems and dated some questionable men. She's been blamed for promoting anorexia and heroin use. And her nicknames include Cocaine Kate and Kate Mess. She's Kate Moss, and she's a rock star trapped in a supermodel's body. I don't know, like um, some bad girl goddess, something like that. Catherine Ann Moss was born in 1974 in Croydon, a suburb of London, England. She had a typical childhood, she liked playing sports, and yes, she was into fashion. No, I love a high heel, always. For me, always. She might have stayed in Croydon forever, but when she was 14 years old, she took a life-changing trip. On her way back from vacation in the Bahamas, Kate was discovered by British model agent Sarah Dukas at JFK Airport in New York. Everybody thought Sarah Dukas had lost her mind because Kate Moss was probably 5'6 at the time and, you know, very strange features, widely spaced eyes, you know, not the best teeth, but she saw something. Her first fashion images were shot by photographer Corinne Day for The Face magazine. But it was when Kate started dating photographer Mario Sorrenti that her career really took off. His photographs of Kate for Calvin Klein's obsession created a new category of fashion icon, the wave. She looked like a little kid. And it was deliberate on the part especially of Calvin Klein. His reasoning was, I want women to move away from that whole super glamorous, amped up beauty. And I want them to be more like simple, minimal, clean, because that was what his designs were like. And because of the endorsement from Calvin Klein, everybody had to use her. Kate's anti-supermodel look made her a star within the fashion world. To much of the general public, though, she looked thin and unhealthy. People defaced billboards with Kate Moss saying anorexia and feed me. Kate Moss, in fact, was not anorexic. She's thin and she's an ectomorph, so she's the sort of thin, narrow type of human being. And at that particular point in fashion, that physique was being emphasized. When U.S. President Bill Clinton spoke out against what people were calling the heroin chic trend, the fashion world took it seriously and wanted nothing to do with anything or anyone considered edgy. It looked like the Kate Moss era was officially over. But we all know it wasn't. Kate's career has now been going strong for over 20 years. She still looks fantastic, but it's her personality that's been key to her longevity. She's wild and um, she's real. <laughs> you know, Kate Moss is not fake. She dates bad boys, she's in and out of rehab. She does what she wants and she looks cool doing it. And when she gets into trouble, she somehow manages to seem even cooler. A lot of people live vicariously through Kate Moss. She's really committed to the rock star lifestyle. When pictures of her doing drugs appeared on front pages around the world, nervous marketers tore up their contracts with Kate and it looked like her career was over once again. But this is comeback Kate we're talking about. It wasn't long before savvy marketers were rushing to cash in on her newfound notoriety. She actually earned more money after the scandal than before. These days, Kate still has plenty of lucrative contracts. She's got a clothing line deal with the British retailer Topshop, and she's got her own perfume. In 2007, she earned an estimated $9 million. Kate Moss may not be a great role model, but she's the fashion world's ultimate survivor and most definitely a supermodel. But is she the greatest supermodel of all time? Log into fashionfile.com and cast your vote.